He was our leading rusher. He really made this team go. A devastating knee injury two weeks ago against Rutgers, and it's put a lot of pressure on this ball club. But there's a sophomore quarterback out of Hawaii by the name of Kaipo Noah Kaheaku Inhada, who's getting his first chance to play. What a platform against Notre Dame, the Fighting Irish, today. Making his first career start. You would think the butterflies may be flying around a little bit against 10th ranked Notre Dame. Well, I'm sure the butterflies are flying. There's no doubt about it. But this is a great opportunity. For the 80th time, Navy takes the field against Notre Dame. The midshipmen look on. It's time to bring out 10th ranked Notre Dame. for the first time since 1963. The weather today rained all of last night, 64 degrees. The forecast, partly cloudy skies. Notre Dame won the toss, they chose to receive. Matt Harmon has it teed up for Navy. And back to receive, David Grimes and George West. And we are underway in Baltimore. Grimes at the 15, has a hole at the 30 and leads out to the 36 yard line. Let's take a look at our Arja, who caught that winner last week against UCLA. Quinn on first down. They're gonna take it outside as Walker finds room, stumbles past midfield at the 45 yard line of Navy. So big chunk of ground taken on the first play, 18 yards. Defensively for Navy, Adams and Silk, along with Chan up front, they run a 3-4. The linebackers are very active, led by Rod Caldwell, the senior from St. John, Indiana. Wanted to play at Notre Dame. And the secondary, McGowan, Buffin, Miles, and Little. Irish already in Navy territory. Once again on the ground, straight up the gut. Walker to the 38-yard line, and let's go above the line. Well, for the Notre Dame offense, Craig, the key is to impose your will. Come on out, and if you want to run it, run the ball. If you want to pass it, pass the ball. Don't mess around with these guys from Navy. You got to get after them from the get-go. Now, Navy on defense, the key is going to be to disguise and confuse Brady Quinn in this offense. They may have to come with blitzes all the time. They may drop everybody into coverage. The bottom line is you can't let number 10 in Notre Dame get comfortable up there. You got to confuse them. Keep them off balance. Two plays for the Irish already. 25 yards rushing. First pass of the day is caught to the 25-yard line. And John Carlson, the tight end, is putting up All-American numbers, his 33rd catch of the year. And, and we have not seen anything exotic yet out of this Navy defense. And I'm telling you right now, if they line up and they just play straight vanilla defense, Brady Quinn and this running game combined together will eat them up. They've got to do something to stir it up. That's Brady Quinn's 44th consecutive game with a completed pass. Three plays, three straight first downs. There's the pitch out. Walker has room, but it closes in a hurry. And he'll maybe lose a yard back to the 26-yard line. And that right there, Craig, that was the first time I think Navy decided to finally bring a little pressure. They came with some backers up the middle. And it created some penetration, did not give Darius Walker a lane to turn that ball up in there. That was a great job by number 55, Irv Spencer, crashing through there and making the play. 
Second down, no gain on the play from the eye. Quinn, quick drop, hands it off. About four yards as Mahoney rode down Walker. And again, you're going to see right here, off the, off the slot right here, pressure from Navy. They've got to do that, and you'll see the two times they came with pressure, they did a good job of stuffing Notre Dame pretty good. Now they've got Notre Dame in a third and sixth situation. The yards are a little bit tougher to come by when you start moving people around a little bit like that, Craig. And Notre Dame's run game has struggled at least last week against UCLA. Yes. But so far, they've gotten off to a strong start here in Baltimore. And last week, 26 yards on 28 carries against UCLA. Not a, not a very good day running the football. Quinn lines up with a shotgun. Barks down an audible on third down and six. Throws near sideline. Nearly picked off incomplete. And that will bring up fourth down. How about Jeremy McGowan, who's at the left corner? Timed it perfectly. He did time. Jeremy McGowan almost looked like he knew it was coming, but I'll tell you, you all saw Brady Quinn checking the play and audibleizing. A great job by Buddy Green, the defensive coordinator for Navy. He showed a look, got Brady Quinn, because Brady Quinn is very good at recognizing things and identifying and trying to get to the right play. But after he made the check, the Navy defense switched. Brady Quinn didn't get what he was looking for in that play. Carl Joya, five of nine this season. His longest of 35. This will be from 40. Is it long enough? It's good from 40 yards out. So Notre Dame strikes first on their first offensive series. Irish up by three in Baltimore. Three. Brian Burkhart has it teed up. Seven plays, 40 yards, three minutes and 15 off the clock. Reggie Campbell is back to receive. He's got breakaway speed, and the kick is away. Campbell at the one. Up the middle goes Campbell, breaks the tackle, squares up those pads to the 22-yard line. Offensively, the fullback and Campbell. Those will be his two main offensive weapons this afternoon. And on the first play, they'll pitch it near side. A lot of running room, and it's Zerbin Singleton. So maybe Notre Dame settles in on Campbell, but Singleton breaks out for a first down. Let's set Notre Dame's defense. They are very tough to run on up the gut. Laws and Landry. The linebackers led by the middle backer, Maurice Crum, a junior from Riverview, Florida. In the secondary, they've been around. Lambert, Zibikowski, and Duque and Richardson. A pickup of 19 is the second most potent ground attack in Division One, and more yards as Reggie Campbell goes the other way. And let's go above the line. Well, for Navy, Craig, if they want to beat Notre Dame, they've got to be absolutely perfect offensively. They got to have perfection. You can't afford any significant mistakes, no turnovers or costly penalties. And when there's a chance to make a play, they've got to make it. Now, Notre Dame, the challenge is all mental. They got to be disciplined, more than physical. Navy is dangerous. We've already seen what they can do. If you make a middle assignment error, they will make you pay by gashing you. Already 36 yards on the ground, maybe a yard for Adam Ballard. And he averages know, over 85 yards a game on the ground. And, uh, you know, one thing they've been trying to work on, Kaipo this week, Ballard wants to make sure that he has uh, the handoff situated with Ballard and also that snap with his center, James Rossi. Yeah, that, that snap in the exchange with the fullback happens so quickly. Look how close Ballard is up to the, the back side of Kaipo right there. It's so quick, they've got to be precise. Second down on the option. Kaipo on the keeper. Leans, maybe a first down. Let's take it to New York for our Liberty Mutual update and Tim Brando. Timmy. All right, Craig and Steve, here's a team that Notre Dame fans are a, a bit familiar with. Michigan, Chad Henney, his 33rd consecutive start. He hits Adrian Arrington for 14 yards and a touchdown. That after a Northwestern turnover, 7-0 Wolverines. Back to Craig and Steve. Well, Michigan. Allowing only 33 yards rushing. That's number one of the NCAA. How about Michigan battling Ohio State for the Big Ten title? Navy running at will early inside the 25-yard line. Shun White. So they've mixed it up so far with four different running backs and a host 
of Irish bring him down. And you saw right there, number nine, Tom Zibikowski for Notre Dame, get up a little slowly. There's a lot of pressure on this guy today to make tackles. You see him coming up to support the run and against the option. And, and as he told us this week in our meetings, he said, there is no way you can practice the speed of the option. And obviously right now, Notre Dame is having trouble with the speed of this option game. Officials will call timeout on the field. They're going to bring out the chains. As you look at Charlie Weiss in his second year with the Irish, much success early, 15 and four so far, halfway through his second year. And and but Charlie Weiss, a little look of concern already in this game. He he did not expect to have this Navy team come out with this young quarterback running it so well. But they told us all week at Navy. They said this guy really can run. Might even be as good a running quarterback as Brian Hampton. And you're going to see just how good this Navy rushing game is. Look at that, 316 yards a game. Now, Rutgers shut him down two weeks ago, held him to 113 yards. Otherwise, they were up about 350 yards coming into that Rutgers game. But they are a very good running team. And this young quarterback, Kaipo, Noah Kahayaku and Hada, I'll tell you, he looks very comfortable out there right now, tucking and running. And as long as they can keep that running game going, keep the pressure off of him, making plays in the passing game, they're going to be all right. Kaipo wins the all name all name team oh. straight out. Try saying that three times fast. <laughs> He's a quiet, soft spoken young man, but you can see the intensity burn in his eyes when we talk to him on Thursday. He'll keep it, and it depends on the mark, but yeah, he got it by a yard and a half. Landry wrapped him up. And this is just basically Navy's version of a quarterback sneak. He's just faking to the fullback and tucking it up right back up in there. Picked up a good solid two yards. Didn't look like much, but it was second and about six inches. A good solid pickup on the first down. And Navy really right now has got Notre Dame on their heels. They're running some misdirection option. They're running the straight speed option down the line. Notre Dame really doesn't know what's coming at them right now. Over nine yards of carry on this opening drive. On the pitch, it was red, broken tackle, and bumped out of bounds at the 15-yard line. Trey Hines keeping his balance. Boy, one thing that Paul Johnson is doing, I think a lot of times Notre Dame was going to try to just set their eyes on Reggie Campbell, but so far, hypo has been able to spread the wealth. He has definitely been able to spread the wealth, and you're going to see right here as they run the option toward us, Tom Zibikowski coming up. You see him flying up from the safety position. He's the one, it looks like today, that Notre Dame is designated as the guy who's got the pitch back. Now, we have to note, Tom Zibikowski has been favoring his shoulder and he's going to be sticking his neck in there. It's going to be a lot of pressure on him today. Maybe a yard by Ballard. Clock running as we head to the nine minute mark. Paul Johnson, how about his five year stay? He turned this program around. He's Taken Navy to three straight bowl games after winning two Division I AA national championships at Georgia Southern before he came to Annapolis. He wins wherever he goes. Third down and three. On the pitch, Campbell, can he turn the corner? Fights for yardage, but pushed back at the 11 yard line by Zibikowski. And that's going to be close to the first down. It's, it looks like they got it right on the marker, and they're going to give him the first down. Just imagine this play coming at you. You know, they fake it, they, they, they run the option so many times, and all of a sudden, little number seven, Reggie Campbell on that sweep, he's so quick, he's only about five foot six, 165 pounds. They can't even see him half the time, but I'll tell you what. <laughs> When he's coming around that edge, they better be ready for him because he's moving. It's a solid 165. First down at the 11-yard line of Notre Dame. The option, Kaipo, the pitch. Oh, there's a stick. You can hear it all the way up here. Campbell took the shot inside the 10, and it was Lambert, the left corner, that squared up and gave him a pop. And that was a good pop, but even still, Craig, that's still a pickup of three yards on first down that's that's what Navy's looking for positive yards on first and second down because they obviously are not a passing team and if you can get them in third and long they have to drop back and pass they don't do that very well so as long as they're making three or four yards a pop this game is going the way they want it to go second down and seven at the eight yard line they feed the Ballard the keeper 
Kaipo taken down by the shoe tops by Trevor Laws, the defensive left tackle. Big number 98 goes about 295. And you're going to see number 98 right in the middle of your screen, the bottom side of your screen coming through there. Did a great job fighting off the blockers from the from Navy coming to him, and he, he does a super job. He's athletic enough to bounce off those blocks. Reed Kaipo coming at him and make the tackle. Third down and eight as we head to the seven minute mark of the opening quarter. In motion goes Campbell. Pass. Kaipo. No way. Takes his seat at the 15 yard line. Abby Amiri from the left end with his seventh sack of the season. And Victor Abby Amiri saying hello to Kaipo right here. Let's hear how it sounded. <laughs> and right there, Craig, you could see. Kaipo does he does not he's not a passer he didn't look real comfortable on that and the Navy blockers up front they don't practice a whole lot of pass protection up there they don't have to do it much Matt Harmon will kick it away from 32 yards and no so a missed opportunity by Navy Irish lead by three the Dodger the last quarterback to beat Notre Dame 1963 made a visit by the way to campus this week and and he went on to do a few significant things in the NFL as oh. well didn't he oh I would say so so a missed 32 yard field goal keeps maybe scoreless Notre Dame back on offense with a three nothing lead Samarja the motion man lines up in the slot Quinn play action good protection dumps off it's caught by Walker he is a quarterback's dream his 43rd catch of the season Darius Walker and, and why does he have 43 catches I guarantee you they don't have 43 passes as designed to go to him but what that was was a great job by Brady Quinn seeing up the field and realizing Navy had a good coverage on for the particular play that was called. He knew exactly where his check down was. He had good protection, found him, made a good, solid decision, almost picked up the first down. 23rd consecutive game with a catch. Second down and short. Walker cuts it outside, has room. There is a flag now. Two flags are down. Two flags are down, one at the 29, the other at the 33 yard line. Holding number 89 offense. 10 yards from the previous spot remains first down, second down. Take CBS Sports Line wherever you go on your internet, enabled phone, access breaking news and in depth stats, get expert video, live scoreboards, and even manage your fantasy team. Click on mobile at CBSSportsLine.com. Well, you can do it all now. You can do it all. Follow your fantasy league team. The hold was on the tight end John Carlson and that marches Notre Dame back to make it second down and 11. And Notre Dame has done quite a bit of that counter action in the backfield. Now this time they come out empty backfield Navy really struggled with this against Rutgers up the seam. So we'll see if they prepared for it well enough over the last couple of weeks. Three wide outs near side they hit the slant bingo right on the button McKnight up the middle he goes near field. Midfield to the 49 yard line. Keenan Little saved the touchdown. And right before the pass, I said that Navy had struggled. Well, Brady Quinn is a guy that can good, make good, quick decisions. Obviously, Rima McKnight was the right guy in that play. And the, the key on this type of play is that the quarterback on a quick throw like that has got to make the right decision quickly. Irv Spencer got in there a little bit too late. It's not going to affect big Brady Quinn knocking him down like that. If you're going to hit him, you got to hit him if you want to hurt him. But that is a formation that really has given Navy problems this year when you go to the empty backfield and spread the field like that. A 30 yard pickup first down Notre Dame. A little juke nicely done by Walker. A no gainer turns into a pickup of three. And that was all Darius Walker right there. Number 18 Rayshon King crashed into the backfield did a good job anticipating the snap count got into the backfield was there in position to make the tackle. But Darius Walker showed he wasn't flustered, took it up inside, made a good positive game. 
Walker just a junior from Lawrenceville Georgia he's sixth all time rushing at Notre Dame over twenty five hundred yards and counting. Under four minutes to play as Quinn pedals back good protection throws tough throw and even a tougher catch by the sure handed Samarja. His 43rd catch of the season. Are they going to take that one away. Now remember this guy's a six foot five wide receiver and they're overruling saying he didn't catch it. let's look at it real quick here. Through his arms and trapped. Yeah it looks like it might have scraped the ground. Well what a what an athletic move by the big guy though to sell out like that and give it a chance. But you know that one right there could have been if had it been ruled a completion and it went to the replay. It may not have been overruled because it wasn't clear one way or the other whether he had possession on that. But since it was ruled incomplete there's no way they're going to overturn that one. This is a Big Ten officiating crew today here in Baltimore led by Steve Newman the referee and now they're going to peek at it anyway I think Craig. The previous play is under review. And again since it was ruled incomplete it's got to be very clear indisputable that that ball was not tracked. So I don't know if you're going to be able to see Samarja's big six foot five body might be shielding us a little bit too much. But well what an athletic move to get out there underneath that football take it inside on the hands but it went right through his arms. I think it's going to stand incomplete. Timeout in Baltimore Irish by three. After review, the play stands as called on the field. The pass is incomplete. Third down. And again, had they stayed with the initial call on that, Craig, if it was ruled complete, it would have been not overturned as well because there wasn't really a shot that showed the opposite clearly. So third down and six for Notre Dame. And Quinn under center at the 47 yard line of maybe. Little counter. A cut back Walker stacked up piled on at the 43 short of the first down by a yard and a half. And it was Buffin who started today at Rover or call him the strong safety who was in on the stop made the initial hit and maybe had it did a good job anticipating that play they were coming off the same side the right side of the Notre Dame offensive line with pressure Notre Dame was trying to run the counter play back into that look. And it was a good job by Darius Walker to pick up what he did because Navy definitely had the right defense call. Well, the gambler, Charlie Weiss, so far this season, 14 of 18 on fourth down conversions. This guy is not afraid to go for it at any point. Zamarja so runs up in motion. Quinn, quick drop, quick throw, cut. The tight end, Carlson, first down and more to the 27 yard line. Boy, those quick hitters, and they've cashed in twice today. Right, Notre Dame. Right here is number 89, John Carlson. Watch what happens. Navy comes with a blitz, and Buddy Green, the defensive coordinator for Navy, told us when they come with a blitz, that is his biggest fear. John Carlson is so good, and Brady Quinn is so efficient at reading the blitz and throwing what's called a hot pass, where they have more guys coming than you can block. The quarterback steps up and puts it right on the tight end. Big game for Notre Dame. Second catch today for the big tight end. Fresh downs for the Irish at the Navy 27 yard line. Play action. Quinn wants a touchdown. Man coverage. Samarja. There's a bump and there's no flags. Let's go back to Tim in New York for Illinois, Wisconsin. Tim. All right, Craig, one of 16 true freshmen getting appreciable playing time for Ron Zook. Travon Bellamy intercepts John Stocko, goes 41 yards to the score. This game has just gone to the second quarter. Wisconsin's inside the 10, but the Fighting Illini have the lead 7 to nothing. Craig. Well, Tim, the Badgers have won the last six of eight meetings over Illinois. And, you know, Illinois has been kind of flying underneath uh, the radar. Wisconsin as well. Badgers 4 and 1 in Big Ten play, 7 and 1 overall. Quinn pressured and down he goes at the 36 yard line David Mahoney with his fifth sack of the season and again coming with pressure we talked about they've got to do something to keep Notre Dame off balance Brady Quinn didn't even know Mahoney was coming and realizes right there whoa they got pressure coming right into the way I'm trying to roll out 
Really good call. You can see right there, number 40, Mahoney coming off the edge. Brady Quinn really had nowhere to throw the football, and Mahoney makes a good open field tackle on a really big quarterback who can shake a lot of guys. You know, Buddy Green, as you mentioned, the defensive coordinator, he knows you can't play vanilla. As you mentioned, you have to take chances like that to beat Notre Dame. That's the only way Navy's going to stay in the ballgame. Third down and long. Quinn rushed out of the pocket, throws off his back foot. And that was a great play by David Grimes, but I think it might be offensive pass interference. There's a little bump right before that ball got there. Pass interference. Defense. Defense. Oh. So Grimes pulls in his first touchdown of the season. There was contact in the end zone, but the officials call it defensive interference. Wow. Brady Quinn showing he can be dangerous on the move, too, right there. I, I don't know how you call that defensively to be honest with you but it wasn't clearly on the offense as well so the bottom line is it was a great catch by Grimes and the extra point is true 36 yard touchdown is Quinn finds Grimes for six and the Irish lead by 10 in Baltimore. When he reads one-on-one -on -one coverage, a chance to make a play up the field. And right there, you saw whatever contact there was, it was incidental. It, it, it wasn't one way or the other. A legitimate touchdown by David Grimes. But Brady Quinn, when he sees one-on-one -on -one coverage with his receivers outside, he's not afraid to give those guys a chance to make a play. It's really a quality that not many quarterbacks have to have that kind of confidence in your, in your receivers. 19 touchdown toss of the season for Brady Quinn, who is really making a run at the Heisman, especially after last week's comeback toss to Samarja to beat UCLA in South Bend. 19 touchdowns, only four interceptions. And a big fourth down conversion set that whole thing up, and now Navy finds themselves in kick catch up mode. Burkhart, big catch, big kick, and no return for Reggie Campbell. Well, tomorrow on CBS, can an audio tape prove that a popular rock and roll DJ was murdered? But don't miss a new cold case. That's tomorrow at 9, 8 Central on CBS. And again this season, America's most watched network. Well, Steve, Navy able to move the ball on their first series, but they missed the 32-yard field goal. Yeah, the backbreaker was missing that field goal. If Navy comes off the field with a 3-3 tie, that sideline is energized, the crowd is energized. Instead, Notre Dame takes it down the field, makes them pay 10 to nothing now. Different ball game. Maybe, of course, running that spread option. Kaipo, the keeper. This time, Notre Dame is much more alert on closing down the corners and knocks down Singleton. Yeah, again, great job. You, you saw the forcing of Kaipo to make the pitch, and that time, Tom Zibikowski, no hesitation. He told us, if you hesitate against this offense, you're going to pay the price. He's got to be quick and decisive. They all have to be. But it looks like he's going to be the one coming up to make the tackle on that pitch man. Under a minute left in the opening quarter, a 10-point quarter for Notre Dame. Another pitch. Outside goes Campbell for the pursuit. Notre Dame looks totally different on this series than they did in the first. They do, but you know what? Even on that first play, great tackle by Tom Zibikowski. What'd they pick up? They still picked up four yards. So again, that's a desirable play for Navy. If they can grind out three, four, five yards a pop, that's playing right into their situation, what they're looking for. They've got third and three right now. Ideal for them. And my point was, they made 19 yards and 17 yards on their first oh, two exactly. carries. They gassed them <laughs> the first drive, no doubt about it. Indeed. Well, that ends the first quarter with the score. Notre Dame on top 10-0. The Home Depot College Football on CBS will continue after this message. Coach, a graduate of Notre Dame, Steve-O, back in 78. Last year, they go 9-3. and three, The Eddie Robinson Coach of the Year winner. But yet, you know what? He said, I feel like that we're complacent. We got to raise the bar even higher. On the pitch. Flag is down. Well, their pads are popping out there as Campbell is bumped out of bounds near the 35-yard line.
Sharp block. Number 28 offense. 15 yards from the previous spot remains third down. Monday on CBS, a honeymoon cruise ends in murder. Don't miss Monday's number one show. CSI Miami at 10, 9 Central on CBS. Again, this season, America's most watched network. You know, we talk about in the, in the open above, above the line, talking about how Navy has to be perfect on offense. No costly penalties. Right there, they pick up a first down on third and three. And you can see they use so many different rushers, but they cannot afford when they get a first down and convert and keep this ball moving against Notre Dame. They're not good enough to have that called back. And now they're looking at a third and 17 and they don't I don't even know if they have a drop back pass in their playbook. So this is very dangerous. You got a young quarterback in an obvious passing situation against the defense that's looking for a pass. So really Kaipo has to be very careful here right now. And I think Paul Johnson knowing all this will probably be very conservative in the play call. Three wide receivers set. Kaipo rolls out. Boy, the middle opens wide, but a nice shoestring tackle by the middle backer, Maurice Crum. Had he not made that stop, that's first down and more. Yeah, that really was, and that was a very nicely designed play. It was actually a quarterback draw. You know, Kaipo, he came out to the right like it was a sprint out pass, but all the blocking was set up behind him. He cut it back, and if it wasn't for that great shoestring tackle, he would have had the first down. Look at this. Oh. Fourth and one backed up. Navy going for it doesn't surprise me. Hey. Paul Johnson knows his team has to make some plays. Here we go, fourth and one. There's movement and a hard count got the flags to come out. But it's going to be called on Derek Landry, I believe. He moved first, and that drew the Navy offensive lineman offside. See number 66, Derek Landry, inside right here. He comes off first. He jumps, and that movement is what provokes the Navy offensive lineman, the left guard Zach Gallion, to jump offside. So, an offensive lineman, if he's provoked into moving, that is not a penalty on the offensive lineman. It goes against the defense. Up the middle, the fullback, Adam Ballard, rubbing it. Stumbling to the 49-yard line of Notre Dame. We go back to New York for an update on Auburn and Ole Miss. Yep. All right, Craig, I want you to take a look at the top of your screen. On this reverse action, Will Herring is an outstanding linebacker. Got sucked in on the play action. Miko McSwain takes it in on a 27-yarder. Auburn is inside the Ole Miss 5, but right now the Rebels lead in Oxford. Back to Craig and Steve. And Tim, as you know, as you follow the SEC so well, Auburn has not lost very often down in Oxford. How about this? Tomlinson around he goes. Stiff arms his way to the 24 yard line. Mike Richardson, the right corner, made the stop for Notre Dame. Right here, Tomlinson on top of your screen. He comes down. The option goes this way. The pitch is going to be right there from Kaipo to Tomlinson coming around. Look at the pursuit of Notre Dame. Everybody goes chasing the option. They have to if they want to play disciplined defense against the option. And backside contained, number 75, Chris Bourne. He lost it, and that gives Tomlinson the hole outside to make a big play. Ballard, they feed him up the middle. He'll bump it to the right to the 21-yard line. Now, Craig, how big? You know, Navy was backed up third and 17. They go for it on fourth and one, and they're given the penalty by Notre Dame. Derek Landry, now Navy has new life, and obviously you can see their confidence picked up on this drive. Paul Johnson going to the grab bag of tricks a couple times, trying to make a few plays. He knows that if he lets this game get out of hand, his team is not a good comeback team. That's a great point. They are built to grind it out 11-12 play drives. Very rarely are they quick hitters. Kaipo goes up. It's caught inside the five to the three. Tomlinson, I thought he may have bubbled that ball, but he got it, brought it in. First down, Navy. And this is a super play call. You see Tomlinson on your screen right there. Fake the dive to the fullback. Notre Dame is thinking second and seven. There's no way these guys are going to throw the football. But Kaipo steps up, completes his first pass of the day. Wasn't a thing of beauty, but I'll tell you what, it was very effective. 
First and goal to the three yard line. Navy has to pound it in. A field goal won't do it right here. 18 yard pass play. First and goal, Navy down by 10. They need a touchdown. Driving, no signal. Kaipo stood up inside the one yard line by Brockington, the outside backer. And that was pretty darn close. I'll tell you, the hit was delivered by Notre Dame, but you can see again Kaipo coming out, faking it to the fullback and then following up in there. Almost, he could have extended that ball over the line. It would have been a touchdown, but a good solid tackle. Navy now facing second and goal with about six inches for the touchdown. Now they got Ballard, the 225 pound fullback behind Kaipo. Again, the keeper, he takes a hit and still no signal. Now they give him the touchdown. Navy. That's a big one foot, I'll tell you that right now. Matt Harmon, the extra point, is up and good. 12 of 13 on the season and PATs. And Navy climbs back to within three off the keeper by Kaipo. All run by Navy. Kaipo doing a good job getting him in a fourth down situation. The gutsy call by Paul Johnson and the fortunate jumping off sides by Landry for Notre Dame, then the big throw, getting the ball down to second down, caught Notre Dame off guard, and of course, the touchdown finishing it up. Navy already has rushed for 132 yards. The 10 7 ball game gives Paul Johnson and Kaipo right there a lot of confidence that they can play with these guys. Nine plays, they go 80 yards in less than five minutes. So Harmon has it teed up for Navy. The midshipman down by three after the one yard plunge by Capo. Short, short kick. He'll take a big bounce at the 15 yard line. West gathers it in and takes it back to the 24. Let's go back for an update in New York and Tim Brando. Tim. Critical game, Craig, for uh, the guys at Faro Field. Missouri trying to get it done against Oklahoma. Paul Thompson to Joe John Finley, an 18-yarder. Two Missouri turnovers, two touchdowns for the Sooners. They're up 14 to three. Well, how about that? Oklahoma, they've won 15 of the last 16 meetings against the Tigers. That Big 12 North still up for grabs. We got an injured Notre Dame player down. And the Home Depot College Football on CBS will continue after this word from your local station. Red Lobster now presents today's Scholar Athlete, Greg Vitetto, the punter for Navy. How about a 3.96 GPA in ocean engineering? Terrific. Former walk-on at Navy. Red Lobster's commitment to the uh, investment of our future is shown today by donating $1,000 to Navy's General Scholarship Fund. And see that injured player making his way off the field, Anthony uh, Vernaglia. Looked like a, a left knee. They were working on the left knee, definitely. But it's good to see him walk off the field, at least, for Notre Dame. As we head to the 11-minute mark in Baltimore, a 10-7 ball game between Notre Dame and Navy. And a pickup of two for Darius Walker. Walker making his way up to about the 27-yard line. He's a power a power runner has good speed outside 510 and he's packed with muscle at 210 215 he is but this Notre Dame running game has been struggling and Charlie Weiss told us one of his biggest concerns especially last week against UCLA was not whether these guys knew what they were doing up front but physically they were beaten pretty handily by UCLA the word was we and got whooped. whooped whooped and he wants to change the tone obviously today quick throw near sideline McKnight and he's up in it at the 35 yard line Raymond McKnight, seven touchdowns on the season, 14 career at Notre Dame. And that is a play, Craig, that has become very, very much uh, a part of everybody's offense in, in the throwing teams in college and in the NFL. If the quarterback sees off coverage on certain plays on a wide receiver on the outside, even though they have a running play called in the huddle, he can step up and throw a quick pass to that wide receiver, and it obviously picks up great yardage. 
good solid play to keep the defense honest. Quinn under center, first and ten. As he looks over the middle, guess who? Samarja, the go-to money man at the 41-yard line. Keenan Little brought him down. Boy, he is such a big target. 6'5", goes 220. And Keenan Little felt pretty good about the hit he put on Samarja, but I'll tell you, Samarja gets up smiling. He'll take that kind of hit for a 20-yard gain every time. And again, that is where Navy has been hurt. Not necessarily from that formation, but up the seams is where people have been making plays on them all year. They've got to be there a step earlier and prevent that from happening. Win on the game, 7 of 9, 132 yards. Up the middle, big run, Walker. And he takes one, two, three, four midshipmen with him to the 25-yard line. Look at the physical job on this play from John Sullivan, the center, Bob Morton, right guard. Santucci, the left guard, straight up the middle, of course, the fullback, Ashley McConnell, doing a great job getting up on that linebacker. That is as perfectly executed a running play as you're going to see. Everything came up just right. The shoulders, the heads were in the right spot, and it executes, turns out into a big game for Notre Dame. And you cannot arm tackle Darius Walker. Inside the 20, let's go back to New York and Tim Brando. Tim. All right, Craig, back to Vaughn Hemingway. Brandon Cox, they had it inside the five, then they got a penalty. Play fake, and he goes to Rodriguez Smith for the touchdown. That ties the game at seven. Auburn's still one of those one-loss teams to look out for in the BCS hunt. Of course, Auburn, the Tigers, uh, Steve, we were there. Won two straight since that big upset loss to Arkansas. Kind of shot college football. Came back and beat Florida. Not much, but close to a first down for Walker. They may have to bring the chains out. It looks like they're marking it just short. You talked about that that Auburn team, Craig, you know, without getting hooked up on it. That SEC, it's so oh. tough to come out of that conference and really unscathed. I mean, unbelievable. You get beat one week and you see the Notre Dame, one of the very best teams in the red zone in the country. They they convert 73% of their red zone opportunities into touchdowns, and it's directly related to that guy right there, Charlie Weiss. Very creative in the red zone. Third down and inches. Outside goes Thomas. Touchdown, Notre Dame! Always a dangerous call. You're bunched up trying to stuff it instead then you cut it outside the lanes open touchdown Irish and it came up just the way Charlie Weiss wanted it to very well executed play again that's, that's Travis Thomas the starting linebacker for Notre Dame who also backs up Darius Walker running back very versatile player obviously he knew what to do with that football a 16 yard touchdown run the extra point good by Joya and Notre Dame quickly puts another six on the board. They open up a 17-7 lead in Baltimore. Back, and you're going to see counteraction by Travis Thomas. It holds the, uh, the defense for Navy, and a good job by Ashley McConnell getting up on the linebacker right there, number 40, Mahoney, and it opens it up for Travis Thomas on the outside. Very good execution by Notre Dame. The down blocks by Santucci and Sullivan. The counteraction, allowing McConnell to get up in there on the linebacker and then finishing it off by Travis Thomas. A 16-yard run. Thomas' second touchdown run of the season. He's good for seven yards a clip. That just upped his per carry average a that, little bit. That seven yards is nothing to, to scoff at either. I'll tell you, that's a good average. Burkhardt, a squibber. Taken at the 19-yard line by the up man. And good field position for Navy around the 34-yard line. That's Joe Silk who got a chance to put his hands on the football. And Wednesday on CBS, after surviving a nuclear attack, the town of Jericho gets its first news from the outside world. Don't miss a new episode. That's Wednesday at 8, 7 Central on CBS. Navy down by 10. Plenty of time left here in the opening half in Baltimore. 
Kaipo rolls, throws, it's caught at the 41 yard line. Adam Ballard with the grab. Now we talk about winning streaks. Uh, Navy Notre Dame. Notre Dame with 42 consecutive wins goes back since the 64 campaign. Marquette in college basketball taking on the University of Wisconsin Milwaukee. That's 34 in a row. How about in the NBA? The Spurs over Boston. That runs back since 1997, 17 straight, along with Dallas and New Orleans. There are many streaks in all aspects of pro and college sports. Boy, Reggie Campbell nearly got his uh, head taken off at the 48-yard line. Zibikowski, who loves to roam, who, who thinks of himself as a linebacker, came in strong with the hit. He likes sticking that nose in there, but look at his counter option. Get everybody running to the right, come back. Typo, very comfortable making that pitch on the outside. There's some popping going on. You could hear, you could hear the helmet snapping, but a good solid first down pickup for Navy. Zibikowski missed that game against Stanford a couple of weeks back, was out with a shoulder injury, left side, but returned last week against UCLA. And you know, Charlie Weiss really wanted to give him more of a rest last week against UCLA for that shoulder. Unfortunately, they were not able to do that. Ballard. Boy, he loves this game. At the 49-yard line, Maurice Crum said hello. Ballard considered one of the top 10, 12 fullbacks in Division I football. You know, he, he is one of the, or probably the only player on Navy right now that's playing that is a legitimate NFL prospect. This guy really is a, the real deal at fullback. He's got the size, he's got the strength, he's got the speed, and obviously he knows how to carry the rock. Pitch out, and good pursuit by the Golden Domes of Irish. They'll knock him down around the 46-yard line. Reggie Campbell getting the workout today. And you're going to see Notre Dame playing the option. Watch right here. Coming up, everybody running to the option, trying to get there to pursue. Overreact. Don't overreact with a fake, but everybody's flying up there, and you see four or five white shirts getting to that football. The first drive, it looked like Navy was a step ahead of him, but Notre Dame now is getting people in position, but still, Positive yards for Navy, a big third down conversion right here. Late pitch out, first down and more. Zerbin Singleton able to slide his way past the 40 to the 38-yard line. See, as long as Notre Dame is giving up positive yards on every play, you're going to see Navy can do what they want to do. They can make the good, solid fake up, up inside. It holds everybody. they got to respect the fullback. There's nobody supporting on the outside. A good job by the wide receiver coming down and cracking on Tom Zibikowski, the safety. That opened up the outside lane. Yeah, great chip block just to throw his uh, pursuit off. Now they try the other side as Campbell is stacked up and pushes forward to the 31-yard line. Now see, right there, first and 10, you rip off eight quick ones. You know, I got to say something about Paul Johnson, the head coach for Navy. This guy, what can you say about what he's done for this Navy program. I mean, first year they were two and 10, but since then, 31 and 13. And listen to this, 11 and one coming off losses. 12 and three coming off bye weeks. Both of those things working in his favor as we talk about the Navy team. They're not gonna go anywhere. They're gonna keep coming after Notre Dame. And that Campbell number seven is one of the key ingredients to all of it. And that spread option, Singleton in motion. And look at the push by Ballard. First down at the 26. Now we look at the clock. 523 left in the second quarter. Boy, if you can get three or a touchdown here, make it pretty interesting That's at right. the half. That's right. They should have, they should have 10, relatively speaking. I mean, which is a missed field goal, a short one earlier in the game. But I'll tell you, number 22, Ballard right there, up the pipe. This guy is so important, nobody does it better. Notre Dame has to respect him or they're gonna get gashed. On the pitch, the catch, Singleton got it around the hip pads inside the 15. All of a sudden, the ocean. They are just running and cutting right through the Irish defense. And that's Sean White. But you see again, Notre Dame has got to focus on the fullback. He goes left. A little hesitation. Low pitch by Sean White. He does a good job picking it up. Had good blocking out in front of him. And a good solid pickup again for Navy. Look at all the blue bodies out there in front. They may be undersized, they may be 
not as fast, but they're doing a good job getting in the face of Notre Dame. They give up 20 pounds plus per man on that offensive line against Notre Dame. Kaipo, maybe two. They'll mark him down just inside the 12 yard line. And the clock runs with 440 and counting. How many teams can compete though, Steve? I mean, you played at Notre Dame. Notre Dame gets the uh, the cream of the crop. 29300 is pretty much the norm. Navy, if you get a 260 pounder in there, hey, you're doing pretty well. You're looking at your chops. You'd like to have five of those. I don't think they have five of them up front right now. But that's where good coaching comes in, and that's what makes it possible for Navy. Tenth play of this drive. They've got a lane to the end zone. At the one yard line goes Reggie Campbell. And just a straight sweep. You're going to see Reggie Campbell coming in motion off the right side. They get the ball to him on the move. That getting it to him on the move is the key because this guy can fly already. But if he's got a head start, it gets him that much more to that corner already. And you'll see the pursuit just isn't there. A good job of blocking right there on the edge by Zervin Singleton, number 28. Didn't do much, but he got in the way of the Notre Dame defender. Campbell, eight carries, 56 yards. Kaipo, the keeper, close. I feel like it's deja vu. That's where he was on that last touchdown run. That's exactly Inside right. Inside the one-yard line. And, you, you know, Brian ha Hampton, the starting quarterback up until this point, was the master of this very same play. He had 10 rushing touchdowns on the year, most of them that very same play right there, but a great job by Joe Brockington, number 52 for Notre Dame. Fill in the hole. Down here in the red zone or in the goal line situation, linebackers, they cannot think. They've got to be flying on the snap of the ball. Joe Brockington was doing that right there. That's how close Navy is to the goal line, inside the one-yard line. Ballard, did he break the plane? No. What a push and a stand by Notre Dame. And I'm telling you what, you can say whatever you want right now, but Paul Johnson, if he doesn't score in this next play, he will go for it on fourth down. He's looking at this as four down territory all the way. That ball is just a hair <laughs> off the line. That was pretty close. They're going to review that one, it looks like. They're stopping it. They're going to check it out. The previous play is under review. Did he break the plane? And look at the emotion coming out of Paul Johnson. He's not yelling at his, the officials. He's yelling at his players. He wants them to do a better job. But let's see that football. Can we see it? Boy, it's hard to tell. Again. From that angle, I think it's a pretty good spot. And you know what? You just can't tell. And, and, and there's no telling with, with, with Ballard, his back turned. You can't see where that ball was being cradled by him. And he's taught to wrap up on that football. You're not going to see a Navy player sticking that ball out over the goal line very often. They're too disciplined to do that. And uh, boy, that was close. Steve Newman, today's referee. It's a Big Ten crew, as I mentioned earlier. You know, Paul Johnson, you saw him chewing out some people there before that. Before we went to the review, he was upset because he knows how important it is to get seven points on this drive to keep this crowd in it, to keep his team in it. He felt like that play could have been executed a little bit better. And I love seeing the fire out of the big guy. I love seeing him get up in their face and challenge those midshipmen. Here's the call, Steve Newman. They've already got their play called if they're going to go to it. Oh, indeed. After review, the play stands as called on the field. Third down. So third down and in inches. This will be the 13th play of this drive, and it started back at their own 35-yard line. And that plays into Navy's right into their hands. They want to control the clock, keep Notre Dame off the ball. Let's see what happens. Kaipo under center. Another keeper, touchdown, Navy! Well, there's no doubt he was in. <laughs> Same exact play 
that Kaipo scored in the early part of the second quarter. Inside the one yard line, a pair of one yard plunges for the sophomore quarterback making his first start in Division I. And you think Paul Johnson is satisfied? You saw him right there getting after Adam Ballard right there. Time out. The previous play is under review. They're going to review it. From our angle here, it didn't look like there was any doubt. He got his whole upper body across that line, it looks like. Oh, Way yeah, he's in. definitely in. They're By a close. yard. Unless that ball came out at some point, which it did not. He's, he's in the end zone. Well, the crowd just saw it on the replay boards Thank here you. at the stadium, and they made the call. Thank you. Yeah. And again, we, we, we don't want to drive the point. Video in. Video evidence confirms the call in the field. Touchdown. It has to be clear that he wasn't, and I'll tell you, the only thing that confirmed that his whole half of his upper body was over the goal line. Oh, the emotions running high for Navy on the sideline. Harmon will try the extra point, boots it up and through. How about this? 17-14 in a battle in Baltimore. This young man in his first start in Division One football. He doesn't seem overwhelmed at all. He seems very comfortable, very cool, very confident. I'll tell you, he's running this option as well as it can be run, I believe. So Matt Harmon will kick away from the 35. Notre Dame up by three with 243 left in the corner. Good deep kick. And no return. He nearly drilled it out of the uh, out of the end zone. Let's talk about the BCS. And of course, as the weeks continue, the talk will heat up. Ohio State and Michigan, one and two out of the Big Ten. USC, West Virginia, Notre Dame is nine. Louisville's in that mix along with Cal at seven and one. How about Notre Dame, a legitimate number? Top 10, a number 10 BCS team? Well, if you ask that guy right there, there's no doubt about it. But I'll tell you, in my mind, I'm not convinced yet. I, I really haven't seen enough. The blowout loss at home to Michigan, two squeaker wins against Michigan State and UCLA. I still got to see a little bit more. Quinn on the run, nifty job of escaping the rush by Navy, and he gets a first down at the 31 yard line. And coming up, on the Geico Halftime Report, Tim Brando, Spencer Tillman, hey, special guest, Archie Manning, in the studio. They'll get you caught up on all the scores and highlights, another busy day in college football, and they'll also preview the second half of our doubleheader today. It's Florida and Georgia. That's coming up on the Geico Halftime Report. Quinn throws, batted down, incomplete. McKnight just uh, put his left hand out. It was behind him incomplete. And that ball was a rocket shot from Brady Quinn, but stops the clock, no problem. But what I was saying, though, on that BCS topic, if Notre Dame does run the table and they beat USC in that final game, I think that solidifies them as a BCS team. But, but right now, the jury is still out, in my opinion. Quinn, shotgun, near side. A quick hit and pitch to Grimes, who had that touchdown. Well, Brady Quinn, 63 percent completion rate on the season, and today, what do you think, Steve? Wow, he, he looks very much under control, like always. Uh, he looks really, really confident in these two-minute situations. But again, I, I like the way he lets his guys make plays. He knows his receivers are going after the football. He rarely makes a bad decision, and he's pretty darn accurate too. I think he's as good as there is out there. Seven of 11. Stands in the pocket, feels the pressure, and throws to a safety valve. Carlson, the tight end. His third grab, another first down for the Irish. Inside Navy territory now at the 46-yard line. Mahoney and Rashawn King made the stop. And Brady Quinn in complete control of the situation. You see him out there. He's not flustered at all. He's under control. He's composed. A little pressure. I'll step up a little bit, move out on the move, deliver a strike to my big tight end. No reason to get greedy. There's still almost two minutes left. We're doing very well. Just nickel and diamond him right now. Trips to the far side. Quinn dancing, flushed, throws, far sideline, short of the first down, and the grab made by McKnight. And the free safety, Jeremy McGowan, uh, with the tackle. Working that sideline, smart, knowing that if there's nothing up the field, 
a play short to the sideline is better than a play short over the middle because that'll stop the clock. And they're working the hurry up, second down and one. Quinn sets up again in the shotgun. And off up the middle. That's going to run some clock as Walker rumbles for the first down to the 33. Well, Tyler Tidwell, number 45 there for Navy. Sorry, Craig. He jumped in. He almost knocked that ball out of there. Uh, I don't think Darius Walker saw him coming from the edge, and he almost got his head in there and popped that ball out. Now, they did stop the clock to reset the change. Now they wind it. Timeouts. Three apiece for the Irish and the midshipmen. Quinn all day has man covered. Going to the end zone. Touchdown, Irish. McKnight was able to out jump Little in the end zone. Thirty-three yard touchdown. And again, that's a great example. Brady Quinn saying, Rima McKnight, I'm going to let you make a play. That was really good coverage on that play. That, that defensive back was right there. Keenan Little was there. But Brady Quinn gives his athletic wide receiver the chance to make the play. And more times than not, they end up rewarding him for it. Extra point is good. How about Notre Dame answering back after the Navy touchdown? 33 yards, Quinn up top, McKnight, touchdown Irish. Chance Raymond McKnight to make the play in the end zone, and he's rewarded with another touchdown. Another squibber at the 25. Did he take it? Dropped it, downed it. And, and he was down when he yeah, got it. And that's going to be uh, first and 10, Navy at the 25 yard line. But these Notre Dame guys, they know, they know they may feel pretty good right now, but they know these midshipmen. One of the things they talked about in our meetings was the respect they have for this Navy ball club because of the fact that these guys are relentless. They will not stop. No matter what the situation is, they're going to keep coming. You got to play four full quarters against them. Navy down by 10. Kaipo wants to throw. Now he tucks and runs, chased down on the pocket. He's quick, makes some sharp cuts, and he'll get close to the 30 yard line. Zemikowski brought him down. You know, I want to go back and mention that. And it looks like there's timeout on the field. Timeout. Navy, their first of the half. Will step aside. Navy calls timeout. 24-14 Irish. Work harder, practice harder, hit harder than anybody else in college football. There's a late pitch. Nicely read. Out of bounds. Stops the clock. First down as Singleton has had a nice first half for Navy. He really has. And on both of these offenses, they, they have not been stopped yet. I mean, there's not been a punt yet in the first half of this ball game. There aren't many games where you can go through a first half without one team having to punt the football. It's just a matter of who's going to cash in with the touchdowns and take advantage of their opportunity. 206 yards rushing in this first half by Navy. The pitch goes near side, out of bounds. Ho oh, ho. Campbell takes a blow from Mike Richardson, the right corner. That's how you make a stop in that was Division pop, One, right? huh? Well, I'll tell you, that was a pop. A cornerback, nonetheless, stepping up and making a statement. That stops the clock with 38 seconds left in a 10-point game. Notre Dame on top, 24-14. Pedals back to throw. The pocket collapses and he goes down for the second time. Abby Amiri with the sack. Timeout. Notre Dame. The second of the half. So a timeout. Irish by 10. Another pass play. Far sideline incomplete. Try to float that one out to Reggie Campbell out of the backfield. Stops the clock with 26 ticks left. 
And he had a shot at it. That was a corner route, but it was actually the same exact play they ran the play before that. Except the first time Reggie Campbell got knocked down about eight yards up the field. That time he was able to get out clean and, and he was open if, if, if Kaipo had thrown the ball a little bit more arc over the top of the defensive player out there. That ball could have been completed, but just got away from Kaipo a little bit. So we see our first punt of the day. So a fourth down and five forces Navy to punt. Nice high hanger, Samarja underneath at the 11 yard line. He'll head to the near side. Nice pursuit on the punt coverage team by Navy. And we've got 16 seconds left in quarter number two. In two weeks, the Fighting Irish are only on CSTV, the 24 hour college sports network from CBS. You can catch Notre Dame as they travel to Air Force to try to stop one of the nation's top rushing attacks. Tune in on CSTV or you can order it online at CSTVPPV.com. Of course, Fisher DeBerry and the Air Force Falcons. What a half as everybody trots off in the final seconds. Crowd is up. Applause here in Baltimore. The first half complete in Baltimore. Notre Dame will take a 24-14 lead into halftime. We now go to Tim Brando in our New York studio. Tim. Thank you. Tenth rank Notre Dame leading Navy by 10 here in Baltimore. Just uh, moments away from the third quarter. Craig Bowler, Jack back along with the former Irish quarterback, Steve Verline. Brady Quinn, two touchdown throws in the first half, 197 yards. He reminded me a lot of you back in the 80s. Ah. <laughs> we never got to throw it quite like they get to throw it these days. Brady Quinn having a spectacular first half, throwing for just under 200 yards. And I love the way he gives his receivers chances to make plays right there, David Grimes. And a little bit later, we're going to see the touchdown from Freeman McKnight. But right there, Jeff Samarja taking the hit. He gives these guys chances to make plays. He seldom makes a bad decision, always doing the right thing. But Navy, they have not punted yet today either. And the reason is because they're running the ball. They've run for over 200 yards in the first half already. Kai Poe, our quarterback for Navy, has done a great job making decisions, running the option, and Reggie Campbell on the outside making plays. But Kaipo doing it himself with his own feet. He's making plays. He's running the offense very, very well for the for the Navy. We take a look now at our Enterprise halftime stats, and both these teams on really almost on mark for 400 yards on the ground for Navy, 400 yards through the air for for Notre Dame. Exactly, and, and the difference is Notre Dame is also running the ball effectively. They're very well balanced attack, but as we said, the only real mistake that Navy made offensively in the first half was the fact that they missed that short field goal and we'd have a seven point ball game instead of a 10 point ball game. But they've played very well. What they've got to do if they want to have a chance to get back in this ball game or to, to win this ball game is they've got to stop Notre Dame once or twice. You can't let these guys finish off each drive with a touchdown if you want to get back into it. Maybe we'll have the football to start the second half. Down by 10. Campbell is the deep man. That one flies over his head and will land two yards deep in the end zone. So a touchback and the midshipman will start at the 20 yard line. Let me tell you something about the first drive for Navy how good they've been this year. They've had 18 first drives of the second half. And 14 of them have resulted in scores 11 touchdowns. This, this is going back a couple years but 14 of 18 scores the first drive of the second half. They've come away with points 11 touchdowns. This would be a great time to get on the board right here to get get this crowd back into the ball game. So back under center, Kaipo Noah, Kaihei Aku Inada is the quarterback. Boy, the pads pop on the first play. He'll take a seat back around the 24-yard line. And three yards on that play, but Kaiaku and Hada right there, you can see, and you're going to see in the stat pack here, this, this video, that he is a guy that can make it happen with his feet. He's not a passer, but he can make the pass. A few key completions today, and right there, finishing it off, much like Brian Hampton used to do when he was a quarterback. His first game today, he looks very comfortable. 25 yards passing, 33 yards rushing, and more importantly, two touchdowns. Ballard, the fullback, the carry to the 26-yard line. 
One thing to watch for in this second half. We talked about the weight differential between these two clubs. 25 pounds on the D and offensive lines. Navy, even though they declare themselves physically fit, and I don't doubt that, but still the wear and tear in 60 minutes of football could show up. There's no doubt about it. These guys, they will scratch and claw, but sooner or later you get a big man who's a great athlete and he's got you by 25 pounds. It's tough. Kaipo, the keeper, he did not pitch. No gain. Abby Amiri from the left end made the stop. Number 95. I'll tell you what, he he engulfed Kaipo right there on this play. Look at that, just swallowed him up, and I, it was a missed block that somehow freed him up. I don't think Kaipo even saw him coming. He was getting ready to make the pitch off the support, man, and Abby Amiri said, oh, don't forget about me, big guy. Here I am. First punt of the day for Navy. Actually, second punt of the day. Botetto, his first punt went 40. Wins picked up a bit. That one uh, was pushed down. A big hop at the 30. And Zivikowski will lose a yard. Now they're going to knock him down at the 30, 31 yard line. So the Irish, they're dancing in Baltimore. And they're up by 10. Time for the AFLAC trivia question. Name the four schools that have produced a U.S. president and a Super Bowl winning quarterback. I tell you, this is one of the tougher AFLAC oh. questions we've ever faced, my friend. I, I don't have a chance. And, and I was told the answer a couple days ago, and I still <laughs> can't get it right. All right. Dangerous time for Navy's defense right now. Uh, they've got to make a stand. If Notre Dame goes down and gets seven on the board, Navy's going to be fighting uphill the rest of the way. And off to Walker, room off the left side, cuts it back, and picks up 11 to the 41-yard line. I like the way Darius Walker runs. He sees the field, takes the hole, but he's able to glide and cut when needed. Yeah, he, he's a, a very, very experienced junior coming back for a senior year next year. The guy is, is really a solid runner. I think last week he was a little bit personally offended by how poorly they ran the football. Maybe he challenges offensive linemen, but he's running the ball like he's on a mission today. So far, 12 carries, 80 yards for Darius Walker. First down, 42. Quinn over the middle, incomplete. Now a late flag is thrown in. I don't think that ball was catchable. It was one hop. It was about the, uh, the only bad throw Brady Quinn's made today. Holding number 57, defense. 10 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Inside linebacker Rob Caldwell. And how about the four headed monster? Quinn, you look at his completion 11 of 15, a pair of touchdowns. McKnight Walker. How about Samarja, yeah. who came in as, well, he was a big man on campus last week. Only one grab for 22 yards after that big catch against UCLA. He sure was. He had two touchdowns last week against UCLA, but that's what makes his Notre Dame team dangerous. When they're executing, clicking on all cylinders, they've got guys that can pick up the slack if one guy is kind of shut down or kind of a focal point. Walker leans to the 44 and a pickup before. You look at Darius Walker. You know, we had a nice chat with uh, the junior from Lawrenceville, Georgia. Says acting is in his plans later in life. And he could see himself, how about this for confidence? A lead man in a drama. <laughs> I'll tell you, he's got the look and he's got the, the ability to, to convey what he wants to say. Let's go back to New York. Tim Brando with an update on Northwestern and Michigan. Tim. All right, Craig and Steve, Michigan uh, winning fairly easily now. Michael Hart is going to take it in from three yards out. He has 95 yards overall. And back to our CSI Saturday crew, Craig and Steve. <laughs> All right, Tim, Michigan battling Ohio State, of course, for the Big Ten title. How about this? Mark this one on your calendar. November 18th, the two will play in Columbus. Number one and two in the BCS. Quinn on third down, big hole up the middle, flags are down as Walker takes a tumble inside the 40-yard line. I think you're going to have motion on Jeff Samarja. He was kind of leaning toward the line of scrimmage before the ball was snapped. Holding number 83 on the offense. Ten yards from uh, the previous uh, spot. 
It remains third down. I was right about the guy, wrong about the penalty. This week on The Late Show, Dave's all new with CSI New York star Gary Senesi, Rosie O'Donnell, and Martin Short. And how about this? Dave blows up a thousand pound pumpkin. That's Monday. Don't miss the outrageous Borat in a top 10 with Jerry Springer. Late Show with Dave. A thousand pound pumpkin. Third down and 19 after the penalty. Walker the lone back, play action, Brady Quinn. Good protection, throws to his safety man, Walker. He's got room to the 50, and bumped out of bounds. Now the flag comes, a late hit. There'll be a personal foul called against Navy. You know what? The emotions After of the, the game. the play was over, personal foul, late hit, out of bounds. Number 57, defense. 15 yards from the end of the run. First down, Notre Dame. But you got to corral those emotions in a game such as this. Ah, uh, this is just the worst case scenario right there. I mean, out of bounds, obviously out of bounds. And Rob Caldwell, who is as clean a player as you're ever going to find, and he's a hard worker, he's a leader of this defense, makes one bad decision. And, and we talk about how every little mistake at a key time for Navy is going to cost them. That was his cost. They finally stopped Notre Dame, and they give him another first down with a, with a really bad penalty. At the midshipman 30-yard line. Nearly five minutes into quarter number three. Motion man Samarja. Walker stood up, spun back to the 29-yard line. Let's go back to New York. Tim has an update on Illinois, Wisconsin. That's right, Greg. We continue our tour of the Big Ten. John Stocko to Luke Swan, a 17-yarder. The Badgers trying to come back. The fighting Zooks, though, still have the lead. 24-17 in the third. And Tim, as we take the tour, let's give you the tour of the Big Ten standings. Michigan, Ohio State, undefeated, Wisconsin, and Joe Pa, Penn State hanging around. Quinn, five-step drop, pulls it back down. Watch out, he can run and he has room. Hook slides to the 25-yard line. Short of the first down, Irv Spencer giving Quinn some pressure. Good job of closing the gap by the Navy defenders right there. You know, Brady Quinn looked like he had a lot of green grass out in front of him, but instead of taking the hit, he wisely got down, put himself in a desirable third down situation, third and five here. Notre Dame over 100 yards now rushing. Quinn good for nine of it. Third down and five Irish at the 25 of Navy. Slant nearly picked. Well, that was great. A great read by Miles, the rover. Super read by Jeremy Miles right there. He he knew that ball was coming. He timed it up just perfectly. And if that ball would have been thrown a little higher, he might be going the other way with it. So Charlie Weiss, the gambler. <laughs> Here we go again on another fourth down. I'm not, he, he's this will be the 20th time this year they've gone for him on fourth down. That's got to be eight to ten more times than anybody else in the country. He's one for one today. Fourth down and five. Crowd is up in Baltimore. Play clock down to one. Quinn releases. It's caught and a first down. John Carlson to tight end with the grab and move the chains. And Carlson, I think, is the most unheralded, really, really good player on this Notre Dame football team. Big tight end. He's a senior. You don't hear much about him because they have so many more stars on this team, but does a good job pushing to the first down depth, knew exactly where he had to go, and uses his body to give Brady Quinn a nice target to complete that ball and pick up a big first down. Last year, only seven grabs for Carlson. This year, 36. They had another tight end named Fasano last year that kept him on the bench a little bit. First down at the 18. Quinn looks one way, tucks and runs. At the 10. At the 5. Touchdown, Irish! about Brady Quinn's abilities athletically throwing the ball as big and he's strong look at him tuck and run it 
runs a lot like a guy you may have heard of, Joe Montana, in my opinion. He's bigger and stronger than Joe Montana, but his ability and the way he kind of glides up in there, he's faster than you give him credit for. He's got great instinct about where the soft spot is and how many yards he can pick up. Finishes off the touchdown run right there. Extra point is up and good. A 19-yard run by Brady Quinn. Can you say Heisman? Back in Baltimore, 31-14. Brady Quinn on the phone after the 19-yard touchdown run. How about nine plays, 69 yards, and 437 off the clock. And you could sense that Notre Dame knew the significance of that drive. They knew that getting up 31 to 14 on Navy would really put them in a bind. They knew they had to drive a point home, aided by the really bad late penalty by Rob Caldwell. Campbell will take it at the goal line off an odd hop. Nearly lost his footing back up and then tackled inside the 10 yard line. Navy will have it when we come back to Baltimore on CBS. Affleck question and answer. Name the four schools that have produced a U.S. president and a Super Bowl winning quarterback. Here we go. Navy, Michigan, Stanford, and Miami of Ohio. Pretty impressive right there. You want to throw Notre Dame in there, but it just hasn't happened yet. Navy down 31 14. They start inside their own 10 yard line. Pitch out. Singleton drives for yards. Nicely done to the 10 yard line. All right, so Navy, Jimmy Carter, Roger Staubach, Michigan, Gerald Ford, Tom Brady. He's got a few rings. Uh -huh. Stanford, Herbert Hoover, and Jim Pluckett, along with John Elway. And at Miami, Ohio, which I think is the tough one, Benjamin Harrison and Big Ben. And that one, of course, just added this past year with which, ben, ben, which, Big Ben and the Steelers winning it. Which one did you get or did not get? Well, I had Navy. That's about as far as I can go. <laughs> <laughs> On the pitch near side. Boy, running hard. I love this guy. Reggie Campbell. He's undersized, but has great speed to the 22-yard line. He runs fearless. I'll tell you, you look at him right here. He's there. He's their go-to guy, and he hits it hard, finishes off the plate. You know, when he walked into our meeting the other day, he looks like he's about 14 years old. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. But this guy's out there with all these giants, and I'll tell you what, there's no fear in this man. I'll tell you, there's, there's no doubt about it. 10 carries, 76 yards. Typo the other way. That's Trey Hines as he digs for more yards to the 26 yard line. They've used a host of different running backs this afternoon. Ballard the fullback. They've gone with Campbell and White, Hines, and also Singleton. Clock running. It's been a quick third quarter as we head to the six minute mark. Well, you know, Paul Johnson, he, he's got to be happy with the way his offense is playing. He'd like to see a little bit more out of his defense and a couple of, of, of bad decisions by his defensive players. But this Navy team is playing good football today. Maybe a busted play. As Kaipo had to hold the ball and maybe a yard. Thursday on Survivor, one castaway proves to be the most dominant player. Will he become the biggest target? Don't miss a new Survivor Thursday on CBS. And again, this season, America's most watched network. And you were right on that last play, Craig. Kahu, Kahiaku and Hada, he went the wrong way. He's the only person going right. Everybody else went left. Not a good feeling. Third down. The pitch. It worked before, and it works again for Reggie Campbell as he pushes his way to the 37 yard line. Good block delivered by Sean White. Able to get him out on this, the corner and fresh downs for Navy. Uh, I, tell you, I, I just love the way this little guy and I don't like saying little guy because he's a, he's obviously plays big but he gets right behind his offensive lineman and 
If he needs to ride their coattails, he rides their coattails. He does whatever he's got to do to get what he can get out of a play. Ballard on first down picks up six. You know, Kaipo has done a, I think, an incredible job under the situation. His first career start in Division I, he replaces Brian Hampton out two weeks ago, severe knee injury. He had surgery on Thursday. We were told today, by the way, Steve, things went very well. He, in fact, is watching the game today in Annapolis. We wish him well. How about that? Nifty squeezing out the yard to the 45-yard line. Remember, Kaipo ran this offense in high school back on the islands. This exact same offense. I mean, not only was it the option, but it was through a player that had played for Paul Johnson before, who was a coach of his high school team, they had installed this exact offense at his high school. And so he's very comfortable with the terminology, with the decision-making, with the reads, and that's what's given him an advantage today. It's not like he's coming in and running it for the first time. Under four minutes to play, third quarter. Under center, they need one for fresh downs. A late pitch outside. Watch out down the sideline. And bumped out of bounds is Shun White, sophomore out of Memphis. Stops the clock with 3.46 left in the quarter. Is, this is pure as it's going to get, Craig. You're going to see the fake here, the trail man coming around on the option, and the defensive end at the end of the line of scrimmage is blocked down. The safety becomes the support, and he becomes the option on that particular play. And what, what is really hard for people to understand is that in the option, it's, it's all called the option, but you can determine who you want to make the option man. You can option the tackle, you can option the end, you can option the linebacker, you can option the safety. It's all determined in the huddle. Oh, no pitch, but this time it is read beautifully. Lambert, the left cornerback. Wow. Head up and you hit him on the number. Wow, right in the kisser. That was Trey Hines. That was not what he was dreaming about last night. I no. guarantee you, he wasn't looking for that. You know, the key to Notre Dame, they had to adjust to the speed of the spread option. You can practice it back in South Bend, but it's nothing like it is on the field. As they pitch near side, oh, and another stick. This one belongs to Maurice Crumb, the middle linebacker. Yeah, you're getting a sense here right now that these these Notre Dame guys are flying around out there a little bit more and they're trying to make a statement trying to drive the dagger right here Campbell the sweep that's worked so well for him oh, not that time Maurice Crumb was almost looking like he expected that play and delivered the blow Maurice Crumb his dad an all-american linebacker at Miami A former Hurricane, they talk every other day. Hypo, or they strung it out, and he jumps over the 35 to the 34. So Maurice Crum, only a junior, 225 pounds, and there's senior. Linebacker for the Hurricanes, 87 through 1990, and he could fill a hole. Yeah, I'll tell you, my, Miami has produced so many great linebackers, and that's good blood right there for Maurice Crum, Jr. Josh Meek is down. Trainers on the field. We'll check him out. We'll take a break with 2.05 to play in the third. He's a season ticket holder here at Navy. Yeah. How about that? That's movement flags. Charlie must like the option. <laughs> he must. <laughs> he sees a lot of it. And we'll do a quick hit about it. Ball start. 63 option. Five yard penalty. Remains fourth down. Antron Harper, the right guard. And that expression paints a picture here in Baltimore. Paul Johnson. Yep. You know, we, we did, we talked about in, in the open how. Perfection is what Navy needed offensively. They had they've had two or three badly timed penalties right there. Four penalties, 43 yards. And that's that's not bad for a game. Four penalties, 43 yards. 
but the timing of them has been terrible. That's the key. It's Four. the timing of where they come. You go from fourth and two to fourth and seven with the team that doesn't throw the football. Three flags this quarter for Navy. They fake the pitch. Kaipo ripped up and dropped. Oh, Navy goes down. A big play by Notre Dame's defense. And you're going to see Notre Dame just swarming from the right side. They tried to give the fake sweep to the right, and nobody, nobody bit on that thing. Kaipo came out and had no chance coming back to his left. Notre Dame was there. Easy pickings. Rom and Laws was there. Charlie looks a little calmer than he did last week in the in that game against UCLA back in South Bend. Irish and they're looking for more as Walker pulls his way past the 40 to the 38 yard line. I think Notre Dame's going to be more than happy to just pound it out now, get real physical with the undersized Naval Academy team. And Darius Walker, he's relishing the opportunity. Looks like good, hard run. That counteraction that has been so effective for Notre Dame today. It's not really a true counter because they're not pulling offensive linemen, but it's a counteraction that's freezing those linebackers and letting Darius Walker get back to the backside. Walker, four yards shy of 100 yards on the ground today. He may know. He's still on his feet as he hops. Look at that. Dancing down the sideline out of bounds. He ran 20 to pick up two. He might have some foreign substance on those pants. I mean, they were just <laughs> sliding right off of him. It seemed like four or five guys had a chance to make the tackle. Officially one yard, so he's at 97 on 17 carries. And Paul Johnson knows that this is not the kind of situation he was hoping to be in. His team is a grind out the clock, five, six yards a pop type of team. They're down three scores already. Quinn sets up, throws over the middle, cut! The tight end Carlson inside the 10 yard line. First and 10, Notre Dame. And what the theme in the passing game has been right here is Paul. Carlson coming right at the seam. I've been talking about how the seam is the soft spot against Navy. Look at this. Right at the seam, Brady Quinn sees the single safety back there. He knows he's got two guys going up the seams, one on either side. He takes the one with the best opportunity away from the safety. Another good decision by Brady Quinn and a big catch by John Carlson. Five receptions, 75 yards for the tight end out of Litchfield, Minnesota. Could be the last play. Or will they get it off? Quinn's going to let the clock run. So that ends the third quarter here in Baltimore. 31-14 Irish, the Home Depot College Football on CBS will continue after this message and a word from your local station. a statement on the national scene here they're doing exactly what they need to do this is an opportunity nationally to try and convince people they are for real they're doing it exactly what they want to do too they're pounding this Navy team they're finding a way to get physical hammered up in there they're doing what they're expected to do and like we said earlier if they run the table it's going to come down to that USC game and that's the game at the end of the year if Notre Dame keeps taking care of business that will solidify them as a BCS team 15 minutes to go in Baltimore. Brady Quinn under center. Stands up in the pocket, throws, and complete. Just off the hands of Samarja on the back line of the end zone. And Jeremy McGowan made that play for Navy because Notre Dame had the right play called. Samarja and Brady Quinn were looking to, to sell the run hard and get it up over the top. But McGowan caught just enough of Samarja coming over the top of him to knock his timing off and take away the angle that Brady Quinn was looking for to put that ball on him. So a good heads up play by Jeremy McGowan. Second down to goal. Draw. Walker stops and goes and takes a hit at the three yard line. 
Boy, one, two, three, five, six. Mitch Shipman took his shot at Darius Walker, who's now over 100 yards, 18 carries, 101 on the ground for Walker. It's just what the doctor ordered as far as Darius Walker was concerned. You know, that you get healthy by having a couple of good days. Everybody thinks Notre Dame's physically got an advantage over Navy. Well, they've come out and run the ball very physically today. And number three has pounded it up in there. And he's showing no signs of letting up right now. And he's the lone back as they put Shamarja in motion. Walker dives into the pile. And that will bring up fourth and goal. Now Charlie Weiss got a decision to make. I think the call is to probably kick the field goal here. Uh, but but knowing him, he might be going for it on fourth down again. You got a 17 point lead. He's going to try and try and bury that coffin right now, it looks like. I didn't even see him flinch. No, there's no doubt in his mind. And, and as a player, you love that. You love to have a coach that says, you know what, we're going for it. Two for two today on fourth down conversions. Fourth and goal from the four. Walker inside. Did he get in? They held him. Dropped him at the one yard line. And you know what that was? That was that was Charlie Wise challenging his offense, saying fourth and goal from the three and a half yard line. I want to see if we can pound that thing in there. We should be able to do this. And they took it up in there, hit it hard, but give Navy credit. They're not going to give it to them. Definitely short of the end zone. A good goal line stand by Navy. They're still in the ball game. Nick Quinn, just before half, finds McKnight, 33 yards, 24-14. And then to start the third quarter, Brady Quinn weaving 19 yards, 31-14. That's where we stand. Here in Baltimore with 13-21 to play. And, and some Notre Dame fans out there might be wondering why Charlie Weiss went for it, but if you think about it, it makes sense. Navy's got 99 yards to go, and they're not going to score quickly. Kaipo throws, and that one came off his hand incomplete. That was well three yards behind Shun White. But Navy, Charlie Weiss knows that Navy's a team that is a grinded out team. We've kind of harped on that today, but the bottom line is if you score a touchdown, you bury them. If you don't score the touchdown, they got to go 99 yards. They're going to eat up probably five or six minutes at least off that clock. And that's just as good as his scoring points, really, if you eat that much time off the clock. Well, Kaipo, his strength is not passing the football. It's running that spread option. And he's going into the wind right now, too. And it's kind of blowing harder right now. Notre Dame just teeing up right now as they stop the run by Katani, the fullback. But Kaipo is the spread option expert. Jared Bryant, who we thought maybe would play today, he wears number two. He was Mr. Football of Alabama. He was recruited as a DB by Auburn. Now he's the guy that's got the arm and can throw the football. And, and we were, it was implied to us by Paul Johnson that he may see some action today. Jared Bryant might. And I'll tell you, if there ever was a time to put him in, you need to score a little bit more quickly. It might be a good decision to try that out. Third down, the pitch. And a little breathing room. Reggie Campbell meets Tom Zib uh, Zibikowski. So Paul Johnson's got a decision to make again here. We're talking about fourth down and about a yard and a half. And it's the right call. He's got got to go ahead and kick it away. You know what? From this vantage point, that's not fourth and one. That's more like fourth and two. That's a, that's a full two yards. Yeah. Third punt by Vitetto, averaging 42 yards, and he's kicking into a pretty stiff wind from his own end zone. Good kick, high hanger, and a fair catch by Zibikowski at the 48. And that's where the Irish will take over. When we come back, a 38-yard punt. People saying possible Heisman, possible number one draft choice. Either way, he's done nothing today but solidify the feelings people have for him.
Just over 12 minutes of play, fourth quarter. Play action, Quinn flush, chased, and he throws underneath, and it's caught big yards. Darius Walker. And again, there is that. We talked about that in the first half. Why did he have come in with 42 grabs? You know what? He drags underneath. The linebackers drop, and if Quinn's in trouble, there he is. And, and Brady Quinn, that was a great example of, of, of how he's matured as a quarterback. He draws back. He keeps his shoulders and his eyes down the field. He senses or feels pressure, whatever you want to call it. Just slides a little bit, knows exactly where his safety valve is. Then it making 12 yards on a three-yard pass. First and 10, Irish. A quick flip to the far side and pushed out of bounds is Raymond McKnight. You know, McKnight, interesting story, Steve, a senior, but a fifth year senior. He was injured early last season in that first or that second game, pardon me, against Michigan, and he got another year of eligibility. And what a what a valuable oh. year that is to the Notre Dame oh. program. You know, they, they've got two great starting receivers and David Grimes the third is a young sophomore but the the, the opportunities that, that having Rima McKnight out there give Brady Quinn is you, you can't describe the options flags are thrown holding number 72 offense 10 yards from the previous spot that's the right tackle, Paul Duncan. And Brady Quinn today, 263 yards, a pair of touchdowns. Well, you know what he does? He makes, he makes great decisions. He hasn't made one bad decision today. He gives his players a chance to go out and make plays. He does it with his feet as well as with his arm. Shows you that he can, he can tuck it and go when he has to. You just can't say enough about that guy. And I'll tell you, his teammates, Charlie Weiss, the people that know him the best, talk about him. Almost as if he's already a Notre Dame legend. Yeah. And uh, he solidified his greatness during the course of this year. We'll see if he can finish off the season. Quinn throws incomplete. Well, I talked about this earlier after he ran it in for six. Can you can you say Heisman? Well, well I'd say Brady Quinn, top of the top of the heap. Well, he's got to be from a from a pure talent standpoint and what he's done this year. But this guy right here, Troy Smith, might have something to say about it. Slayton, the, the running back for West Virginia. Those guys have done nothing but solidify their uh, credibility as a, a legitimate Heisman Trophy hopeful as well. So it's going to be a great race, and it's going to come down to the final week of the season. Third down for Notre Dame. Shotgun Quinn at the 45. He stands. Drops to the 50. All day to throw. And coverage. And the catch is made. Grimes inside the 15 to the 13 yard line. What a throw. Triple coverage across the middle. Now that was a great throw. I mean, watch this. Brady Quinn steps up. He reads it. He knows where David Grimes is going. Puts it right behind Mahoney, number 40, who had done a good job dropping into his zone. But Brady Quinn's got the confidence and the ability to stick that right behind his ear and see David Grimes coming. You got to start with the big boys up front, though, oh. too. They gave him the time to sit and wait for Grimes to clear all that. Super throw and catch for Notre Dame. A pickup of 26. First down, they stretch it out up the middle. James Aldridge, a freshman, they have high hopes for. Out of Crown Point, Indiana. Gets his first carry of the afternoon. That's his fifth carry as a Golden Domer. Yeah, we'll, we'll be hearing more about this freshman over the years. He's the guy that people talk about as succeeding Darius Walker. He's had some injury issues this year, and he's just now getting to the point where they can start subbing him in there and getting him some reps. Notre Dame has been really efficient in the red zone today, as always. And the youngster gets the call again. He powers his way out of bounds at the seven-yard line. You know, back to Aldridge. It's amazing when you look at these young guys making the transition from high school to college. A year ago, Aldridge is playing for Merrillville High School. He ran for 21 touchdowns, over 1,400 yards, averaged over five yards a carry. Well, uh, you know, on paper, 
That looks good, and he was probably pretty dumb. I'm sure he was. But when you see him up close and in person, that's where you make the impressions. And I'm sure he was a dominant physical runner. You could tell by the way he finished off that run that he's not afraid to stick his nose in there. Third down as Quinn rolls, looks, in zone. That's a throw right there that Brady Quinn makes look really easy, but I'm telling you, that is not an easy throw. Remy McKnight was in the back of the end zone. Brady Quinn on the full move just flips it right on the money in the back of the end zone. Super throw by Brady Quinn. The extra point coming for Carl Joya. And the kick is up, splits the uprights. Fifth game this season, Quinn has thrown for three touchdowns. Leadership of confidence, you know, what the players expect when he's on the field that something good is going to happen. What a compliment by Charlie Weiss. Now, we talked to defensive coordinator Buddy Green of Navy. We said, what is it? And he made it simple. He said, it's the complete understanding and control of a football game. That's what it is. You know, there's so much more to it. Than anyone, you can't put your finger on it. And it's like Charlie said, you know, no one really can tell you what it is. But the bottom line is that the great quarterbacks, I, I think it's a presence. I think it's a confidence. I think it's something that you earn from your teammates and from your coaches by just coming through and producing time after time in key clutch situations. Brady Quinn has earned that, and he's got it. Another short kick, up man takes it at the 15 to the 25 yard line. Make sure you stick around, double header day here on CBS. Navy Notre Dame and to follow is Florida and Georgia. Number eight against number 25. You'll see it in high depth. The Gators and the Bulldogs. They both need it, I know that. There's gonna be some popping going on down there. It's a game that both teams, both coaches have to have. Pitch out. Now they're going to go in round. And they fumble and cover up Campbell. And a big loss back inside the 15. Time now for our Liberty Mutual update. We go back to New York and here's Tim. All right, fellas. Wisconsin has rallied against Illinois, scoring 17 unanswered. John Stocko is going to hit Andy Crooks here for a 22 yard pass but he's as he's rumbling he gets hit and popped and he fumbles recovers it in the end zone they did review it it is a touchdown Badgers now lead by three Greg wild one there Illinois Wisconsin the Badgers four and one in the Big Ten typo option breaks a tackle and slides his way to the 19 yard line clock runs under eight and a half minutes ago. That little razzle dazzle play Navy ran the play before that as we see some of the midshipmen. But that razzle dazzle play before that is another example of you know you got one or two of those plays in your bag of tricks and Paul Johnson really was hoping for something positive out of that. Instead he got a 10 yard loss. Incomplete on the throw. Typo a little slow to get up longest college football winning streaks. It's Notre Dame Navy it's night since 1964 42 straight number two in that line is A&M Texas A&M against TCU. They've run that one to 24 in a row Oregon and Idaho. This will be number 43 who off the side of his foot. And this one will bounce short of midfield at the 49 yard line. Off the foot of Vitetto. 7.42 to play. Let's revisit above the line. 
Well, you know, Navy's done a great job protecting the football, but they've had four key penalties that have really hurt them. Notre Dame, defensively, they've put pretty solid. They've given up a lot of yards rushing, but not the big play. Offensively, they've been able to do whatever they want, throwing the ball, rushing the ball. And Navy, defensively, the sky's confused. Well, they had a little period in the second quarter where they had Notre Dame a little bit confused, but since that point, Notre Dame has been very solid. They've been four men on third down conversions. They have really been able to do pretty much whatever they want offensively as this game has gone along. Well, Charlie Weiss now has the luxury with a 38 to 14 lead to put a couple of youngsters in the ball game. And they give the ball to James Aldridge. He'll get some reps here late in the fourth quarter. Aldridge, as we mentioned, the freshman, Crown Point, Indiana, and a new quarterback, Evan Sharpley, a sophomore out of Marshall, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And this will be the most extensive action any other quarterback for Notre Dame has received all year. So Brady Quinn's day is done. 18 of 25 for 295 yards. And through the middle goes Aldridge. And how about tomorrow on 60 Minutes? What happens when you put a microphone on Coach Charlie Weiss? Well, the priest at Notre Dame may not want to hear it, but you can on 60 Minutes tomorrow. <laughs> The priest at Notre Dame may not want to hear it. Huh? Well, I'm hooked. I want to hear it. <laughs> I'll be listening. I uh, bet you. I tell you, our talk with Charlie this week, uh, so interesting. I mean, he just has asked the question. I'm a no-nonsense guy. I'll give it to you straight up. There's no doubt what he's thinking. Oh, a nice tackle on the shoe tops by the nose guard, David Wright. Notre Dame has got several other backup players in there right now. It's a good opportunity to get some of these big boys up front some action with the game in hand. Well in hand get them some reps because uh, you never know down the stretch when they're going to be needed to, to be called upon to step up and, and play with the first team in a big game. Next week the Irish will take on North Carolina. And then maybe we'll have to travel to Duke. Sharply the handoff for the pads are still popping look at the second effort by Aldrich there's a lot of respect I want to make sure we talk about this a lot of respect between these two clubs it, it, it goes without saying the, these are two classy institutions that really do respect each other as football players but also because of what each of the universities stand for they believe they're held to a higher standard and they play that way they act that way you don't hear about these guys getting in fights, getting in trouble very often. And if it does happen, it's handled quickly and sharply and very effectively by the universities. Five minutes of play. Again, snap, handoff, Aldridge. Well, time to check in our Ruby Tuesday player of the game, hands down. Give it to Brady Quinn, 18 of 25 today, 295 yards, three touchdowns. You know, you could make a case for Rima McKnight having two touchdowns and a really solid day catching those balls, but Brady Quinn, he's the straw that stirs the drink. The guy's been so productive over the last two years, and I'll tell you, Charlie Weiss coming into this Notre Dame program and into Brady Quinn's life has has done wonders for him because he's been able to really blossom and establish himself and live up to the potential that everybody knew he had. Right up the middle. And we go back to New York for an update on Michigan State and Indiana Tim. Well, the questions, Craig, once again about John L. Smith's team quitting on him will come up. Kellen Lewis, his fifth TD pass of the day, and James Hardy, a school record fourth touchdown catch in one day. Also, Auburn up on Ole Miss with six and change remaining. 20 to 17, actually, with five and a half left in that game. Back to Craig. Tommy Tuberville back at number seven in the country, seven and one after that hiccup against Arkansas, who's been a big surprise in the they, SEC. They've been a big surprise, but uh, you know that Auburn coming back and beating Florida put them right back in the hunt. You and I saw the Arkansas game; we thought that might have done them in, but that SEC is crazy. Aldrich 
stacked up short of the first down. Well, just in time for Halloween, catch a frighteningly funny episode of one of the funniest ensembles on television, How I Met Your Mother, Monday at 8, 7 Central on CBS, and once again this season, America's most watched network. <laughs> Halloween coming up, my friend. What are you going to be when you go trick-or-treat I'm going to be, I think, I'll Steve Berline. Uh, you I, know what? I, I need a Notre Dame helmet, though. That, that's a uh, <laughs> big uniform to fill there, oh. man. <laughs> Under three to play. Fourth down, Notre Dame will go for it. And a little bit short. James Aldrich. Well, he drives, does he not? He does. He, he, he looks like a guy that hasn't been able to run the ball for a while. He's having fun out there getting some, some action. Well, here's what Notre Dame looks at in the month of November, North Carolina. The Air Force game against Fisher to Berry and the Falcons will be on CSTV. Army, of course, and then USC, number three in the country. It all comes down to that one. The floater is caught. Jared Bryant replaces Kaipo at quarterback. Singleton with the catch as we look at what remains for Navy. Remember, they came in today five and two. They're going to drop to five and three. They needed the six wins, Steve, to get to be bowl eligible. And their next three games, their opponents, Duke, Eastern Michigan, and Temple, have a combined total of one win. And that game against Ar Army, December 2nd, on, you'll see it right here on CBS, will be a big one for the Commander-in-Chief trophy. Reggie Campbell makes the grab at the 45. But Navy needs only one more game to become bowl eligible, and I think it's safe to say that by the time that Army game comes around, they'll have two or three more wins. Should be sitting in good position. I know some questions may be asked in post game to Paul Johnson. Could you have used a passing game? Would that have helped open things up a little bit more? Could you have put Jared Bryant in in certain situations? But you know, at the time, up until halftime, Kaipo had done a, a fairly strong job. He really did. Oh, lost the ball on the sack. Irish, they recover at the 45 yard line. Bryant never saw the sack coming. Yeah, that looked like big Justin Brown coming around the corner. 250 pound junior coming around the corner. Just, just too fast for Matt Pritchett, the left tackle. He should have been picked up. Jared Bryant thought he had plenty of time, but Justin Brown is a little too fast coming around that corner. No chance. Pat Kuntz recovered the fumble of Jared Bryant. So Notre Dame back on the field with 140 to play. Fancy here for Charlie Weiss. Now time to name the five-star play of the game, always presented by Wrangler. Well, it's with a guy you might know already today, Brady Quinn, but it's with his feet. Great touchdown run, sends him nothing open up the field. Does a super job of getting to what he can get up there and feeling instinctively knowing that he can take it a little bit further and get his nose in the end zone. Great job showing he can do it both ways. That gave Notre Dame a 31 to 14 lead. And the Irish defense really has taken it from there, pitching a shutout here in uh, the second half. Yeah, once Notre Dame got up, Navy, again, is not the type of team that can, can really make it up in a hurry. And the Notre Dame defense has gotten stronger as the game went along. Under a minute, the streak will remain. Steve Berline, will 43 remain. Three in a row. 43 in a row. The, the frustration continues for the midshipmen. And, uh, you know, you got to give these guys credit for coming out and fighting hard every every year and they believe every year that might be the one. Maybe it's going to be next year for them. but let's revisit real quick before we go the Notre Dame BCS situation. If Notre Dame does run the table they're going to be sitting in really good shape and I, all I was saying all along is that they've got to win out to prove they earned that spot. Well after a tough game last week against UCLA heroics in the final seconds by Brady Quinn and Shamarja. No question Notre Dame dominant today as Charlie Weiss will walk off the field with a 38 to 14 win. For Steve Burleigh, Craig Bullerjack, we say so long for Baltimore. Notre Dame 10th ranked 38, Navy 14.
coming up. It's a 